Hi everyone, I'm your host Anisha Rahman and welcome back to another episode of Youfluent. On today's episode, we will be assessing the impact of social media on young people. Now, social media is central to so many young people's lives. Why? Because we use it for all sorts of things. It's become this necessity. We use it to actually keep track with everyone's lives. We use it to communicate and we use it to keep in touch with everyone. Just make sure that we actually maintain that social contact with everyone. But it's also been used in such a negative way as well. We've already seen lots of research come out and talk about how certain apps like Instagram, Facebook and Snapchat have actually increased feelings of depression, anxiety and actually negative feelings around body image even. And so it's all about how can we actually address that? How, what balance and con controls can we actually do to make sure that we are restricting our usage on social media but using it in a way that is also responsible and safe? So today we'll be speaking with two guests today. We'll be speaking to Tanima Islam, a sixth form student, and Jennifer Rahman, a health facilitator. So how are we both today? Oh, we're doing fine, how are you? How are you? Yeah, <laughs> that's good, thank you, I'm fine. So yeah. first things first, just so that the viewers can get some context and background on both of you. Do you both use social media? Um, yeah, I, I do, do occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do so, sometimes, mostly. Yeah. What, what social media platforms do you both each use? So Tanima, you start first. Snapchat and um, Instagram sometimes, and that's mainly the two like that I use a lot. Oh, what about you, Jennifer? Um, I've <laughs> I've got Facebook and I've got Instagram and I've got Snapchat, but I don't really go onto it's there. I guess <laughs> everyone's got it, so I have to have one. But... Oh, and that's really good. It links back to my next question. I was actually going to ask as a rough estimate. Um, typically, how long do you spend on each of those social media platforms that you just mentioned? So why don't you start off first, Jennifer? Um, I don't use um, Facebook, so it could be there just maybe a month or two later, I'll just check in, that's it. Um, with Snapchat, I don't use it, I just use the filters to play around with my kids. Um, <laughs> but the Instagram, I do actually go in and check for updates, um, just looking around, getting ideas. But I would say maybe 20 minutes. 30, 20 minutes, most likely on Instagram. And what about you, Tanima? Um, like, every day I go on it, just but at regular intervals, like maybe if I come back from school or like before I go to bed, and sometimes during the day, more, some days, like more than other days. Yeah, like, um, I use it sometimes more and sometimes less. Like, it just depends what I'm feeling. And sometimes I also, like, have detoxes because sometimes I just want to stay away from like the whole social media and like because there's life yeah. without social media yeah exactly completely and I guess that really links back to my next question Timo why do you think teen uh, teenagers actually use social media um well I kind of think they use it more because of like their self their insecurities like not all the time but mostly like they just want to seek some sort of satisfaction and gratification out of like the amount of likes they get or the amount of people who are commenting like beautiful like a nice comment comments on their like posts because I know like I like to check that like if I have a new post on Instagram for example I, I'd, I like refresh it to see who commented who saw it who liked like it gives like a temporary like sense of um, uh, happiness you know completely that feeling of sort of being validated really by society yeah, as well and being able to I guess like I don't know just having that compliment feels really nice you know and to see that you know people think this certain way about you I guess yeah, you know I as teenagers we're obsessed with how people perceive us and I guess that's just what is really important it's just we're always worried about if is someone looking at me in a negative light does someone think this about me really and I guess that sort of feeling we think goes away with social media even though really it can actually make that feeling like 100% worse what yeah. about you Jennifer why do you think teenagers um, use social media from a parent's point of view? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's also style, makeup, um, hacks, how to do a nice clothing, um, hairstyles, makeup, loads of things. Um, kids actually go onto it because I know my kids do. Um, they go into checkups. Um, what's the new latest fashion? Um, what? is this person doing um, or their idol um, it could be a musician or an actress um, so things like that I would say 
yeah completely to stay connected with the world i guess making sure that they're not really losing out really on what is out there you know and they think they have to stay with the latest trends and stay with the latest people i guess to really i guess fit in really so i guess the next thing is what are the benefits that we can see with social media in particular with teenagers you first anima well i think like in terms of seeking knowledge and things like that and like aspiring to be something big is a benefit like you see so many different people like I know sometimes it could have some drawbacks like you know the um like the famous people and how they are but I feel like for them to look up to those and aspire to be more gives them some sort of like motivation and um, um bigger perspective in life and like what they can be and let's say they can like reach their full potential if you understand what I'm saying completely just trying to be like those type of things as well trying to model it emulate really yeah, what yeah. that is you know to try and aspire I guess to be that you know we are starting to see like lots of people come up with like businesses or try to be those so self-employed people you know we are starting to see yeah. that what about you Jennifer what do you think um, are the benefits with social media for teenagers I think social media is a benefit where you can actually have a platform to say what you want when you can't and also it's not just for teenagers for adults also but I have noticed it has a good point and it has a bad point to it. Um, it can be used for good things. It can to enhance your profile, um, enhance what you want to say out for good things. For example, it could be um, you're an activist for something or um, you want to promote something um, or yourself, basically. But the negative of what I found was it could be used um, for bullying, um, it could be used to send hate comments out and loads of things and that's the drawback um makes yeah. it quite difficult where do you stand and how much you've crossed the line or not really completely and i guess you know like you were touching on jennifer with that point of young people i guess becoming more politically aware and raising awareness what do you think that looks like on social media have you been able to see young people i guess sort of putting their activist campaign views out there I've seen a good positive of it and I have seen a lot of negative comments where you get so many people come in and make such awful comments um, and yeah. attacks. Um, I think when you're outside, if it's on the newspaper, it's there and it goes away. But when it's social media, it's there, it never goes away. And True. anybody can search it and it always comes back. And then what people don't realise it, it's actually quite damaging. And especially for a young child, um, it's devastating. Um, it could actually follow them around through their adult hall. And that's when you kind of think, no, there has to be some guidance in there. Watch it. And if somebody is doing this, why isn't any action taken? For example, if an adult goes around saying, and a child is doing something, and the person who's monitoring it, um, like Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat, they have a duty because it's your thing. And you should have put guidance and say, look, this is what you can do and what you can't do. And if you go above it, that's it. Because there has to be some kind of, um, I think, Completely. with kids. Not just, a, I think people don't think, oh, okay, one rule for adults and kids. No, it has to be, I think, two rules. Whereas, yes, adults, there's certain things you can. But when it comes to children, they should be saving and you have a duty. Not um, just as a company, but as a parent and a, a responsible person. So if everyone has to follow the guidelines, why can't they? Um, and I think because it doesn't have it, the negative things when it when a child is being booed, it could be one of the classmates could take a picture um, and can use it and can manipulate it. And in God knows, so many things that have happened. And I think with now COVID being present, um, kids are so desperate to be part of something, and um, they do use so much social media. They don't realize the fact that people are taking it out of context and putting it in things that they don't realize and you do get a lot of people following it who are nothing to do with it. they just like to pick on it and if someone starts on that person everyone joins in and sometimes media do play on it and and that's what's i think upsetting is to see that happening in this society that it's acceptable and it shouldn't be yeah, and I think completely cyberbullying is a real issue and I think parents really do have the right to be concerned about it because 
unfortunately the way it works a lot of teenagers do experience that or any of so even just that feeling of negative comments or negative really posts or something you know Tanima what do you think do you think it's a really real issue here cyberbullying yeah I think um it not, maybe not so much today but it still is quite like um available like easily like done because people feel like behind a screen they have so much power and they don't have that power in real life so they, feel they just kind of take advantage of being um, behind a screen they feel like it's okay just to say whatever and not really consider the feelings of what the individual is actually feeling because mental health also like plays a role and that has like it really it does affect that um, yeah yeah do you think Tanima parents should be concerned about their child on social media do you think that's quite right or do you think that's a bit extreme um i think it's quite right because i feel like if they weren't there then like teenagers won't really have anyone to go to they, they won't think it's right to like go to them for advice they will just think like oh my parents just like let me so you know like it's like they won't have that um, moral support in terms Completely. of like, anything does yeah. go wrong you know yeah and how do you think so social think media actually makes these young people really sometimes insecure because i know myself i feel insecure sometimes a bit when i'm posting something like oh my god like i'm oh, sorry you know yeah, yeah. No, um, i feel like it's because like people try like they post their best moments in life like not exactly like every single moment in their days like on um, social media so like those who do have less or feel jealous towards anyone they, they might just think oh my gosh this girl is like have living some ideal life and that could be quite damaging to the individual or, or like anyone because um they might just think oh why isn't my life that perfect so it does have an effect and certain things like posts could trigger that insecurity of theirs so it's just it's kind of negative because it just um sells us a lie basically you know completely i think sometimes with the whole posting the pictures thing what it is we have yeah. this culture of you're only you know you're only liked if you have loads of followers and loads of likes other than that if not you're not known you're not you know reputable this is yeah. you know you're not really anything big and i think just that culture itself is just really like toxic and so i don't know about your cool. views on it but do you think that really affects young people i guess when they are trying to I guess, share their life moments because like you were saying we try to put up this version of yourself which might not exactly be totally truly reflecting us and do you think this culture that we have here with likes and followers do you think that is part of the bigger issue here? Yeah, it totally is. Like, because I just feel like we all kind of rely on other people to give us happiness and their words when we should really be ha happy within ourselves and nothing else, like anything else could bring like happiness, but it should just be a bonus. It shouldn't be like the main reason why we're happy because we can never really rely on social media because at the end of the day like um the more followers the more likes and stuff you get you also do get hate because people like we're not all nice and like we don't we and we might even be jealous or insecure as i said before and like people just might hate on people and again like they have that sense of bravery because it, they think it's not that much of a big of a deal just because it's behind a screen and they can say whatever and i know so many people have like you know said such horrible oh, sorry, horrible things and also um like and also um like for, for example like all the famous people out there like they have so much depression and anxiety some people they want to even quit their careers because of the like effects the negative effects it has so it just yeah. kind of proves like the point of how everything on social media is like just to deceive all of us completely know? it's like those tragic consequences i remember when we had that love island presenter carolyn flack as well and it was like yeah, you know when she did commit suicide true. for example a lot of it we were all surprised because it looked like she was all happy really with social media and then we found yeah. out it was actually driven really from those article and comments around her and i guess people don't completely understand how the words can really have an effect i mean i know myself i as much as i use social media i hardly ever post and when i do i usually probably ton of comments or like I just post on Instagram mm. stories and I yeah, can't really yeah. get comments or likes like sometimes I just cannot like really be completely bothered I guess with trying to do that which is yeah. it's weird because 
it, there's a lot of like psychology, I guess, that comes behind posting things. It's about even before and after you really post it, you really think about it quite a lot. It's this question that's really on our mind. Yeah. And what about you, Jennifer? What do you think about um, this sort of situation? We're talking about the more, the more followers and the more likes you have, the more popular you are. What do you think about that sort of culture? Do you think that's toxic? It is toxic and it's also um, an addiction. So the more likes you get and you go, oh, I want to do that. And then you have that, say, for example, you got 200 and then you kind of go, oh, I want to aim for 400 or 300. And once you get that, it's not enough. You just want to keep on going and it becomes an addiction and you can't get off it. And it, it's that rush um, and the comments, oh, you're nice and all that stuff. And the more they think, and it's also, I think Instagram also has, influencers you know like young people musicians or uh tiktok things like that and they encourage it and it makes it look like oh gosh if you do those and this um you can make it big like me so everyone wants to be like that so they they tend to do these things and what they don't realize they might have a different way of getting into it it's not the way you've done it and you may try and get on it the normal way and people take that out of context and they're going to start pick on you for those needs, it could be someone with a special needs and just wants to go in there to connect with their favorite person or, or their idol or, I don't know, um, an activity they like. And it, it, it turns into a vicious circle where this person could get so much attacks from it and they don't realize and their picture is being used in other social. And this person might not even be using other social medias, just maybe one or two. And it does get taken out. And then you're starting to panic um, every time you put it there. What if this is being taken out? And I, I, I think that addiction needs, parents need to also check up um, and lay some ground rules also. You know, are you okay? Checking out the kids, is everything all right? Um, how's social media going? You know, look through it. Um, even though it's an invasion of privacy, looking through a child, but at the same time, it's to make sure they're okay. And even just checking with your kids, I think that is the most, there's much, you, you can't do anything um, apart from that. Um, but I do think the government needs to put a tougher regulations on that. And companies, there's so many loopholes and they do get away with it. Um, Facebook has everybody's data. And then even if you do leave it, it's still there. So you kind of have to think about those things. Um, anybody can get into it. They can fake their age. And the thing is on social media you can be whoever you want um there's no stopping you and uh, where it's outside at least you know things where you can or not where it's social media there's nothing you can actually make up things you can make up your age and it could be someone um an adult it could be a pedophile someone i don't know um, an example who can impersonate it and people aren't aware there's so much dangers in that um so you, parents also just need to be more vigilant more uh, just, yes kids can have a phone and they go through so and there's so many apps social medias that um kids can go through and what parents don't realize is that the dangers there they think oh okay this is just a tiktok or oh, this but it's the i think like for example I, i've seen on tiktok where a really really young child who's a maybe 11 or 10 in a revealing skimpy clothes is doing a TikTok dance. And it doesn't look like a little child, but it is a child. But oh, yeah. outside, adults don't see that. That's why I'm, I'm concerned. It's the fact that why aren't there any rules? She's not doing this. Where's the regulation? Why isn't anyone monitoring these kind of behaviors? So those, I think that's what I was saying was um, concern is there needs to be more tougher guidelines and every social media needs to take it seriously and say no actually right now we all have to change it we have to safeguard the kids um not just the adults um but a lot of things and they need to take it seriously before it's too late completely i think there doesn't i guess what you're over saying here is that there needs to be more protection because children are vulnerable to all these things you know they can be really easily exploited and i think it's something that not lots of companies are recognizing really because especially now i think with social media there has been i guess this sort of sexualization of children you know unfortunately that is what some children and young girls especially are more you know pressured to do they have to sort of i guess they succumb to that pressure really from society expectations and want to look like their biggest idols you know for example i know kylie jenner so many girls aspire mm. to be her 
and that sort of thing. What about you? Do you what do you think, Tanima? Do you think you have started to see a sort of rise in particularly much more younger girls here we're speaking about, maybe those who are even more, more 11 or above? Do you think you're starting to see them, I guess, sort of put out this image that isn't entirely theirs, perhaps, maybe being a bit more sexualized? Yeah, of course, because, um, like, again, they just want to fit in with everyone and they're probably they're in that stage where they're like tweens and they just want to be like all their older cousins or sisters or like all the older teenagers and even like um, the things they watch on tv especially on youtube now and like it could have an effect on them and they just want to be bigger because and like also just fit in because i know i have some younger cousins and they always talk about and like tiktok dances and makeup and all of that and they're literally like eight years old and it's just like it is kind of concerning but i guess it's like the common like um theme yeah. nowadays you know so i do think um younger girls are trying to like become as if they're like older and uh, like show that like fake side of them and it's like kids yeah. are not even kids anymore do you think intervention though will really make any change if the government was to intervene or social media networks made tougher regulations do you really think any sort of regulation of any kind will really make a difference or not really um i don't know because like if i think it will but it would have like it would take a lot of effort because um it's just like it's gone out of control to be honest to be honest. Yeah. yeah i think as well sometimes with like social media networks people do put like a sort of fake date or birth or something even younger yeah, kids especially, do, yeah. to make themselves look older i'm pretty sure when i was younger i put on one social media network that i was like 32 <laughs> and i wasn't 32 obviously but yeah. i did do it for a social media network because i was like do you want to give my date of birth here it doesn't seem real but yeah. i just thought that was the only way and i think at that time i was like 11 or something as well and i remember my, my, my mom was like really annoyed with me at the point as well i was like no you're too young <laughs> but i did try at some point and then i eventually did get it in year seven but it is that sort of thing and I, you kind of think i guess if they were to make regulations maybe it might be aimed at a particular age group but how would you know if it's really that age group is completely benefiting from those changes and yeah. regulations, you know? Because, you know, we've heard those encouragement about regulations, you know, lots of people have talked about the dangerous impacts of social media, but I just feel like we haven't seen much progress here. And I think that is yeah. one of the things that we need here. We need progress because we're hearing loads of people talk about the topic and so many young people are passionate about it, but we're just not hearing enough action being taken. And I guess that is when we need intervention really. But how do you yeah. think social media can also magnify a young person's anxieties about peer relationships? And that can be romantic or friendships or even um, relationships with the, your family, really. Um, I think, what, well, like, sorry, do you mean um, about... So like, how does it, like, increase someone's thing? anxiety? Yeah, like those virtual oh, conversations. Oh, yeah. How can they really create an anxiety, I guess, within young people? Because... I guess there is that pressure to be that sort of certain way. Sometimes texts are misrep like misunderstood or there's uh, that miscommunication, that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, it does give like a bit of anxiety because like, especially if like young couples, they're speaking, they, they want to come across to each other as like the best perfect person because they're trying to, it's like they're trying to sell themselves to that person. And, like, exactly, completely. If you like find them through social media, there's one aspect of like being wary about it because you don't really know them and you're like you haven't seen them in real life or maybe on facetime and stuff but that also takes a, like a certain period of time before you do that because you need to get to know the person and see if you actually have like are compatible and have things in common so it does rise in like um your that makes you feel more anxious because you just it's like again you're just being fake and you just mm. need to be yourself to be honest like yeah. And what about you, Jennifer? Because I know before you were talking about the exploitation part, really. I think it's more like um, reality TV for them, I guess. When you're on um, Instagram or TikTok or where, to be the best. Um, and I think slowly it does start catching up with the, um, for anyone, really. And you, you will start seeing the cracks. Are, and the, the anxiety is going to be there, I can guarantee it. Um, worrying is this person going to like it how's the reaction and if you get one negative then you're trying to make yourself better by trying to do another video and I think it becomes a, a vicious circle goes around and then and that's when actually 
it, it's that point where you think I can't take it anymore and it does build up some people can do it and some and especially when people who have vulnerable who are already vulnerable it's more devastating for them um so <laughs> it has a good benefit to social media but it has a really quite a lot of bad no, benefits completely, yeah. once you look carefully into it um so yeah and it can, it's like you were talking about earlier and about um the kardashians and um, siblings um doing it could be um their way of pro profiting they could be t talking about this plump lips and things i remember um, a couple of years ago something about plump lips and how they were putting on um i think it was bottle cap or something in the lips yeah to make the it Kylie Jenner lip challenge. <laughs> yeah and it was yeah. actually and then when, when i found out i think when kids were showing up because this is what's happened and then she turned around and said oh i got that you know done but and that it wasn't how she meant it and then it was found out in the newspaper that it had surgically done so you kind of think these things you're they're desperate yeah. to be part of you to be your follower and i think having guidance in there would help in along the long way but also celebrities have also a duty i think when they join they should have a legal document or something when they knowing so when you sign in um, like when you do an application form or a contract you sign and so i will you know abide by these rules if i don't you know i get sued or fired or something like that i think they need to have in social media like this for celebrities who take part and who are huge influencers and by not doing that on that it actually um makes it worse so it doesn't matter if the guidance there if your follow um influencer is flaunting and doing whatever they want they're going to listen to the influencer that's why i think isn't just social media the government um also celebrities have a duty to abide by the rules and there should be regulations for them to if they're going to be taking part using that they need to have rules for themselves and if they break it that's it it should be no second chances completely or maybe maybe second chances. <laughs> no, no no definitely <laughs> And I think, you know, we have really heard a lot about the negatives of social media and as well. And I know a lot of parents as well are concerned that social media can affect a young person's education. So, Tanima, what do you think? Do you think social media affects a young person's education or um, not really? I am kind of in between because, like, in terms of seeking knowledge and, like, the availability of resources, like, is amazing because uh, we don't really need, like, a... A physical like teacher teaching us we can watch videos and we can like follow certain people on like instagram and who like do the mini clips of like you know maths revision or whatever it is and it is quite beneficial because it just like something quick and easy and it's like easy um to access so i think it's like good but sometimes it could also have a negative effect and like in terms of like especially in how we're in sixth form everyone wears their own clothes people might feel like they have some a pressure to be like you know to just fit in and fit in with the trend Completely. so like everyone who's posting and stuff like that like their day-to-day -day lives and it just could affect their school life as well because they might be so focused on how they look to school instead of actually getting an education exactly so, no completely yeah. it's just that sort of like worried about your image and your body image and your looks and appearance it's just yeah. all really plays in and social media really enhances that feeling i guess as well and so this would be really interesting, but what do you both think social media addiction looks like? Because we know that it's bad, but what do you think it looks like? What are the concerning signs that we need to worry about? So you can start off, Tanima. Um, the constant, like, checking on your phone of, of like, notifications and, like, mm. like um, when you post something, constantly just checking the views, who viewed them, did, like, a certain person notice me, and, like, that. Like, just um, constantly feeling like you need to check, even though you don't need to. You can literally stay away from your phone and just live your actual life. Um, but everyone just seems to think life's all about social media and all. And it's like, or like when you wake up in the morning, the first thing people tend to do is check through their social media or like when they, before they go to sleep, why can't you just straight away go to sleep, just put an alarm on or something. Or like, you know, straight away brush our teeth in the morning or, you know. So it has kind of like taken over our lives and everything we do. Completely. And what about you, Jennifer? 
Um, I use Tanima actually. Um, it's a notification, checking the phone. Um, it's like having it. I don't know how to say it. When someone has addiction, they're either twitching around, they're worried, anxious, and it's similar to like that. Um, they're always checking on their phone. Um, it's an, it's like a next fix. I have to have that. It's a view. It's a comments. Um, who is viewing it? Um, and also, if someone's famous comments on it, you screenshot it, and then you kind of want to engage on it and circulate it. And it does become a big problem and then this influences their studies um because the time that they're supposed to be spending and they're spending more on that because they're checking up on it views then trying to see who they can follow um what comments they can get from that person if that person would like them back or follow them back and that kind of plays up and then when you go to school they're all worried about what they look like um how their clothing is it, can they, just to blend in fit in really with i don't think all schools are like that um but everyone's in social media so everyone <laughs> wants to be part of that it's like um being part of a high school music but it's that sense in there it's not high school yeah. musical but everyone wants to be part of that connection <laughs> and social media is that group where it branches out to everyone and i think and this per I think social media also in some way connects all, all the kids because you can find out this school has never met another student from another school, but they seem to know it's through social media. And then oh, from yeah, that true. school, that person, they turn around, oh, this person did this. Did you know this person wear that? And you, it, it becomes quite bizarre. And you kind of think, you've never met each other. How <laughs> is this person? And it's all through social media. And you think, oh, gosh, you know, how much have you put out there and then when it gets and it does get taken content so sometimes they feel pressured they have to send it. and kids I, I think nowadays do feel pressured about body image and the way they look what they wear and then they think oh okay because social media is doing around um, selling um, sending selfies you know of their bodies and things yeah. like that. and then it becomes like a big thing and then you're trying to get rid of it and then mm and and it's you kind of wonder yes social media has a really nice platform to you know, get your voice out there but then there is that negativity um so i i i personally don't think social media should be that heavily influencing kids really but but there are good things that has come out um some things in the news they won't talk about um and it's out there um so, for example, clothing factories, um, it wasn't mentioned in the news a while ago where I think big companies were buying it and not paying um, uh, foreign countries who were making the clothes for that. And that wasn't aware of it. And I think this was during our Black Lives Matter. So I th recently, the news papers um, have picked it up, but it was already out on social media. So you kind of are in touch with it and um, aware of it, but like i said it has good bits <laughs> negativities yeah no definitely and how do you think we can actually create a balance with social media usage as um teenagers and young people really how do we actually create these restrictions and you know um those measures i guess to control our social media usage ourselves because you know we're not really seeing any intervention at the moment and it really is just really down solely to the individual to i guess control their social media usage so what do you each recommend because you know tanima you're an actual student yourself you know you've gone through this sort of thing before you you know you sort of know i guess what things you have to do and you know um, jennifer you are a health facilitator so you should you know, you would probably know, I guess, about those type of things that would really affect someone's health really. So what do you each think would be the best thing for young people to do? You can start first, Tanima. Um, I think like having detoxes regularly is helpful. It just gives your mind like some space to just relax and live like your actual life and just spend time with family, friends, just outside of the phone. Like, and so like detoxes and also, um, just limit yourself, like limit the t amount of time you spend on social media and um, just watch movies like on the TV and stuff and like those kind of things do make you feel a bit like better in terms of like not always being concerned about who's doing what, what like what's happening here and there, you know, it doesn't, it's like that burden is gone away for like a certain period of time. No, yeah, definitely. 
And what about you, Jennifer? Um, I agree with Tanima. I think detox yourself. Um, and also take a time away and parents have a chat with their children about it. And also maybe if, this, if they're younger, have um, some kind of, I don't know, uh, <laughs> restrictions on it. So you're aware of it. Um, so it's just to safeguard them. And if they're older like Tanima, I think it is also nice to have parents just to talk about, are you okay? Is there anything bothering? And also... There's so many activities you can do. I know because of lockdown, a lot of people are stuck inside. There's you could do baking. There's online courses you can do, like knitting, painting. Um, there's so many things you can do from home. Also, even though it's not much, but you can um, catch up on reading. Um, there's meditation. Um, you, you can meditate. There's yoga. Um, <laughs> and a lot, a lot of um, charities are actually joining up and local communities are actually joining up doing yoga classes um, I recently joined yoga classes so it was really quite nice um, and it takes that mind off um, and you don't, you're not looking at social media and things like that so it's, I think for a child it, is actually quite, it would be quite beneficial um, and I, I think also society and you know local authorities and everyone just joins in and helps out with activities and things and it keeps them busy rather than just looking at social media yeah no completely thank you both for speaking on here today you know you both were so passionate about this and honestly you guys have probably inspired so many viewers for that as well and it was really important to have your perspective there you know from both a parent and a student so thank you so much for that thank you for so welcome. you know thank you <laughs> thank you so you both heard it here. Social media has its positives and negatives. So, you know, we've already seen with the negatives, with the exploitation of young people. We've seen how it's actually fed into this idea of, you know, this sort of toxic thing where we need more likes and more followers, I guess, to actually fit into this really sort of, um, to sort of fit in, into this idealized version of ourselves. We're sort of putting out this version of ourselves that we're not completely, I guess, sure of, of ourselves because we're trying to aspire to be these big figures, you know, these big figures like Kylie Jenner and stuff like that. And what that's actually done is actually fed into our mental health really negatively, you know. It's really impacted it in a way that's actually led us to actually have more feelings of anxiety, really. And it's actually promoted, you know, um, lower feelings of self-esteem. We start to feel really bad about ourselves. And this is just something that shouldn't even be there, you know. We actually need to start thinking about how to take care of ourselves. And we've already heard digital detoxes and actually taking your time away from social media because it should not serve as a replacement completely for physical interaction. Yes, it's really great. It's a great way to communicate. It's a great way to raise awareness, I guess, on political issues as well. And it's a great way to actually learn more about people, find people you've never met before. But what this we need to do is think about how can we also regulate ourselves? Because at the moment, there is no intervention out there by government and big social media companies that actually really restrict your usage or really are completely caring about the mental health of young people. So what we as young people can do, though, however, is because we have such a great big awareness of the issue and we know directly firsthand how, you know, damaging social media can be to us. What we need to do is think about what can we do to actually make sure that we are not completely obsessed with social media, that we're not completely addicted with it and that we know that this is actually a negative thing. I can take myself away from that situation. Um, one thing I want to say is that now Ufluent is on VOD Talk, which is an associate partner of vodcast so please do tune in um, every single time wednesday 6 p.m still the same thing and please do follow vod talk um, youtube channel as well just please make sure that you can support my work by actually subscribing to the channel and by following our social media accounts thank you <laughs>